As we are going to be starting off in the upper left-hand corner from Talon Esports, we have Dark. And Spawner in the bottom right, as our Blue Protoss, representing Berlin International Gaming, it is Showtime. It's getting late over here, we've been going all day, but we still have the crowd out cheering away. And uh, some guys ready to give us some good games of StarCraft 2, man. It's exciting. I mean, Dark, he's, he's, he's a guy that I absolutely love, you know? There's that whole meme of me being like, oh, I like this new <laughs> kind of thing. But no, Dark's really just been a true thorn in the side for a lot of top players, just because he can make anybody look silly. Not in the way that Rogue used to do it, where it's just like, you know, clean, sharp, like I kill you in four minutes StarCraft. Like it was quite boring, to be fair, a lot of the times when he won. But Dark, he can actually make the impossible happen very often. And I really love that about him. And just that series against Hero earlier, where he's like, you know what? Let's just get some Queens and Overlords. Like, it's not going to be pretty, but it is going to be in your face. And that's just the way that Dark likes to fly. Yeah, we, we were talking about it as well, right? You played against Hero. It's like, you see Dark play online a lot, and a lot of people, they play online a bit differently. And Dark, especially, you look at his play, you're like, well, this is online play. It's a bit chaotic. It's not as well thought out. It's a bit of this and that and a mishmatch. And he comes to Katowice and he plays the exact same sort of thing, right? Because that's his specialty. And while it may not all be optimal, it's very good at putting your opponent in a weird place. And then your attacks can hit a bit harder. They can hit a bit better. And your opponent doesn't always have that practice and experience of, oh, yeah, well, if you hit me at this time, I can do this and get away with it because no one else really plays like this guy. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I feel the fact that he goes in with what he's going to do automatically he's playing his game. Doesn't let his opponent really do what they're comfortable with. What is Showtime comfortable with? He's comfortable with sitting back and defending and doing all that and really surviving. Dark, he's the kind of guy that he knows how these players play. And you said it, he plays like he does online, where it's like such a freestyle, all over the place kind of way. It's almost like he's turning into a bit of a hero when it comes to Zerg, but it doesn't stop there. He can play a whole variety of styles, which that's what makes Dark truly terrifying. And Showtime, he opened up a lot of Stalker-type builds against Rainer, I believe. I just spoke to Rainer briefly, talking about uh, how Showtime hasn't played Stalkers in years. I really thought it was going to be Stargate, and then he did it. So nice to see. Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what Showtime brings in this series, because Dark's just, he's a different Zerg altogether than Rainer. Both are brilliant, but in very different ways. Kind of feels like you need the Stargate against Dark, right? Because you just need to be safe. The Oracle provides so much safety and scouting. Try and figure out what's going on. And of course, you know, there's, there's different ways to then follow up from that. So we'll see exactly what the plan becomes here for Showtime. The Stargate and Triple Oracle is very standard from him. That's something he likes to do a lot as the first couple of links get adventurous, but the Adept is here to turn them back away and say not today. Absolutely. So far, everything the bread and butter of this matchup is just going to be a little bit of Dark trying to find out what exactly he's up against. I know, like, Stargate play tends to be the most uh, most used strategy, most used build, but so far, Showtime's done a good job of denying that. But remember, Protosses do still have some other tricks up their sleeves that Zergs need to make sure they're not quite up against. Yep. No, absolutely. As uh, Link Speed finishes up and I'm just saying, you kind of, you know, said it, right? I'm excited to see what Dark's approach is going to be. You can sort of see where Showtime's taking it fairly standard for the moment, but what's Dark's approach going to be to try and knock Showtime off of his kind of comfort zone? Oracles obviously will be very defensive initially. You can obviously then use these Oracles with the Adepts, maybe for a little bit of a poke. Initially might use that to just expand with as well. Looks like we'll get that third in the next few moments. But yeah, one of the great things that Showtime often does with Oracle Adept is to kind of push out, really clear creep with the Adepts as well, using the Revelation as detection. He was one of the first to do it. I remember when it became like uh, something we tested in like a balance tournament. And Showtime was instantly like Oracle Adept, like clearing up creep. And he's continued to use that ever since. As you do see, the couple of uh, drones going down. The Oracle getting pushed away to the corner. And of course, he's just keeping on building those Oracles for now. But a couple early drones always adds up. It certainly does. I mean, those Oracles, especially getting it behind the bases, always a damn nuisance. Dark hasn't taken tremendous damage yet, but he's also been kind of skimping on those spore crawlers a little bit. And you see the second oracle here realizes, hey, there's a couple of queens here, but I can continually get damage done. Now, there is a spore at this natural, so can't dive in there. Both these guys he's very badly wounded here. Oh, he, my goodness. Oh, he calls the one, gets the other to the corner, low HP. I mean, it worked out for the moment. One more oracle showing up towards this base. Triple queen here, that's a no-go. And this one at least will save most, most of its HP, only really losing out on the shields. Showtime sets his follow-up into action. Twilight Council and the Forge 
Doc's been pretty greedy, man. Overlord speed, lair, all these things. Only just now building links as the adepts come over. I feel like if they were there 20 seconds sooner, that could have been scary. Now, now well, it's just going to be that creep clearing force. I, I tell you what, Showtime's position that he's getting himself into here, very nice. And the fact that he's forcing out so many units, I mean, does Zerg really need this amount of links? I mean, well, he's going to kill him. Yeah, I think I tried oi, to. Oi, oi, oi. I mean, that's a, I didn't expect the Shaden to exactly go off there, but the Queens were a little bit late to the party, but they are going to clean up this Adept squad. And you might be thinking, hey, was that really good for Dark? And I mean, it's definitely nice for him. I saw Overlord drop being done here. He's already got the speed. Yeah. And this okay. is one of those moments, Wardy, where it's like, <laughs> Dark, he's kind of had enough of what Showtime's been doing in this game. Titus to follow it up as well. Showtime, he already knows what's going on. Cannons, a battery, extra gates. He's obviously a long way off, plus one and Blink, but if he can just somewhat stabilize. And of course, in this situation with just Blink Queen, it's so much about that Sim City. So I'd say there's a real hope, especially with enough cannons and a couple batteries. I'd say there's really a chance right now. Uh, there's a massive chance, an absolute massive one, depending on where he really wants to go. I mean, seven Queens, they can pack a true punch here. I, I like it. for the Nidus. I like what Showtime's been doing, but this is exactly what he pulled out against Hero when he, you know, he was poking him too much. Showtime's supply is very good, but he's supply block for the moment, and he's been non-stop pro in 63. That might have been a bit too greedy from the German over here. You're so reliant on that stack defense, but Dark's going to work around it by Nidison into the main base to get the links here, and the Queens obviously just drop in, so what a fascinating position. The only thing I'd say is this position is very choked up, so it's going to be hard for those links to find a lot. Let's see what we can do. Queen's venturing a bit off creep. Needs to be careful, make sure those transfusions are still available as Stalkers fight from the low ground. So the battery in the main base is available, and we can overcharge as well, should there be energy, which I'd be surprised if there wasn't. So far, I think this is still looking pretty good for Showtime, though, as Tark is going to bring the spine crawlers through. I mean, that's really cool, but Showtime's handling this absolutely beautifully. The amount of static that he got up into this main base, oh. even the stasis here on the natural. Dark. Oh, the links. That's yeah. every link. I think he's going to be sent home packing and he's, got blink. he's still probing up while this is going on as well he's holding phenomenally 66 probes to 38 drones this is not what dark was expecting to happen here i with blink done this game i want to say it's near unlosable for showtime he's in such a good spot now his stalkers will never die the spine crawlers cancel as dark realizes uh oh i'm in some trouble he starts up drones back at home but that ain't really gonna fly as dark tries the big old retreat showtime will go and get everything he can Nidus goes down. He's obviously got some creep to clean out, but one revelation will get all of that, and Showtime leaves up 40 supply, and nothing really stopping him from going on the map with those stalkers. 70 probes, Wardy. He is yeah. rich. Like, absolutely rich. And look at this. Look at Dark's position here. You look at this, and you're like, hey, this, the Protoss probably did some aggression, right? He got really far ahead. No, 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 no. He did a little bit of poking here and there, but Dark he is in a world of trouble here. Losing the Oracle, it's like the first bad thing that's happened for Showtime this game. But a 40 supply lead. Like, Showtime, this is not a moment for him to sit back and just kind of bunker on up. He needs to go, 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 I feel. And really, like, he needs to know that his opponent's so damn hurt after that. At, at least take an instant fourth base, right? Like, if you're not going to go, at least you're going to go in economy, which he is going to do. Temple Archive's coming up. I think the one thing that holds him back from sending it is there's no prism, there's no reinforcement. Enforcements, and you know Dark's going to instantly be back across the map as well, so maybe that's a frustration you're already preemptively thinking of. So reasons for him to maybe not send it, but with the fourth base coming up, at least he's guaranteeing some advantage off of all of this. I, I even like this defense. Oh, and another stasis here. Stasis. I mean... Now he can go. Now he can go. Now he absolutely can. He's got plus two, closing in on finishing up, getting the robo up and running as well. Storm on the way as well. And <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, so much. It's actually crazy. You know, usually when a Pros holds off these attacks, they're like wounded, they're bleeding, they're like just about trudging along. And, and this time, Showtime, he's like walking on water, man. Like he's just not being stopped. And we have a quick look at the worker kill count, because I'm not sure if he even lost a probe. He didn't, oh, he lost one probe. That might have been even like a scouting one as well. That just shows how good he is feeling. And Hydras are the unit of choice. They can obviously deal good damage and stuff, but that is just so much Protoss, man. I mean, this, Dark's doing a good job of staying in this to some degree, but I don't know how he holds. Great concave by him, though, and honestly, Showtime. It's getting a little bit tricky for him to break through, but Dark, he's so wounded, man. He's on three bases, going up to Hive to try and get a Lurker done out. Yeah, Lurkers are going to be here, but there's just going to be such a lack of them. We're already seeing the Storm. We're seeing the Robo coming online. The other tech is coming through from Showtime. He's not full sending it while, you know, not succeeding and not having tech. He's just sort of poking. It looks very aggressive because he's just that far ahead, but he has all the right follow-ups. Immortals already coming in. There's nothing he needs Immortals for right now apart from the Lurker transition. So he is really cementing his lead. And yes, it might not be a quick finish, 
but he's just, I think this is the safest way to guarantee, because what if Dark hadn't tried to tech up, spammed a bunch of units, and then jumped on Showtime being overly aggressive? Showtime's been incredibly safe, but not in a way that's like put him behind and allowed us, he's been in his face, he denied the fourth base, right? And the fact that he's been so good about these upgrades as well, plus three being pumped out here, getting more cannons as well, just really, really hunkering on down, solidifying his position, and Soon, Dark's gonna have to do something to try and get himself out of this absolute hellhole. Showtime's so ready for like the lurker based all in timing, right? Cannon's coming up once again. Of course, Dark, it's not worth drawing yet because you've got no fourth base to send those drones to. And by the time you have a fourth, you've probably got drones left over from your main and natural that are mining out. Uh, Showtime, of course, has Storm as well, amazing against all these Hydras. The lurkers are the only slightly scary thing on the map, but when there's only six of them and your army looks like this at Showtime, I find it difficult to believe he's going to be that afraid, and he is continuing to push in despite seeing the first Lurker shots, drops the first Revelation down. Dark has split off down the ramp as well, so he's all over the place here. Showtime will back it up just a second, and there is an attempt of a nice in the back of the natural, but that's denied. Ah, uh, yeah, nice Stalker in position, of, and as well with the cannons that he made from earlier. I'm really impressed by Dark still holding on here. Like, if this was any other Zerg, I'd be like, yeah, they, they're, they're kind of dead, right? But Dark's the kind of guy, he's been in these kind of situations so many times that there's a little bit of me that keeps having faith. And he's doing a really good job of spreading out his army just to stop the AOE damage. But it's real tough to break this Protoss army, man. Yeah, Showtime just kites away from the Lurkers as well, lets the Storm go down on the Ling Hydra that tries to chase. And again, just maintain an advantage on, on this map. You can see the rotation to this front base and to the side base and just trying to force Dark out of position. You can do so much with this setup, and he's just going to drop the Fleet Beacon down another Stargate because he's maintaining the lead and continuing to increase that lead as he goes. Absolutely. Even getting some cheeky storms off here on the Lurkers, just softening up a little bit. And Showtime, he's playing very restricting here. Big storms do land. His army's very difficult to really take out. He's on plus three weapons, remember. All these units dealing as much damage as possible. Decent storms. I mean, even the drones getting pulled. That's a desperate Zerg if I've ever seen one. So he knows, he knows that he's wounded and hurt. Showtime did try and target fire down the hatchery there, which was just saved. That's one of those moments where it's like, oh, that's dangerous. But if he knocks it down, it's brilliant. In the end, he kind of nearly knocked it down, but still traded okay against the army. So not too bad. And again, with extra stargates, you start producing carriers here. Dark is so far away from any sort of response. Maybe even just Tempest. They build a bit faster and against the lurkers, they will force damage immediately. You really have a choice of what you want to do. Dark is a mile away from Aspire, so yeah, we'll see what Showtime builds into. For now, a couple more models, and uh, a few more High Templars still focusing on the ground, but has the option of the later game air tech if wanted. What is the resources lost have at right now? Because I, I really feel that Dark has been trading very decently to say how bad a situation he's been in, and everywhere that Showtime's running into, there's lurkers. I'm I gotta commend Dark again just for how well he's making it came out of this because he was 70 supply against 110 at one point in this game and oh nine immortals though that is so much ground firepower that he has to worry about it is scary because if showtime does mess up one fight super badly dark's at the position where he might be able to get back into it right like you can even lose a fight here showtime and still be okay but there's also that fight where you lose everything and dark gets across the map with lurkers before you have a rebuild and you just can never clean up the lurk account so you need to be making sure that never happens Obviously, again, transitioning into air units, all the stack defense will help him with that. Showtime clearly is just happy to say, yeah, if I need to play this out late, I will play this out late. I'm not afraid of you making that comeback because I'm confident I will make the right choices. Yeah, and Dark's being very careful about like his pullbacks. Like you saw Showtime, he was ready to pounce on that army. Dark being very good about knowing that was just like, all right, get back, get back. Let's, uh, let's hunker down on these four bases, get ourselves set up, but I don't think he has any clue about this. Unless this cheeky overlord did get a decent scout on those Stargates. No, nothing yet so far. Yeah, uh, and even if he scouts it, does he have the money, like, free to really drop a Spire down? He's had to spend everything he had to, like, max out right now. And he's even then, he's only just, like, introducing a Viper or so. Like, his tech is really limited. It's been lurkers or bust for him up until this point. So those carriers coming through are going to be tough. Hatchery dies. Dark in the position to be giving up 300 minerals. How many cannons are on the map right now? I've just been looking at that production tab. It's just been cannon after cannon after cannon. And you see Dark. This is not normal map vision for a Zerg right now. Yeah. He looks like he's playing like a Terran, you know, without sensor Super towers. Super Turley, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, Creep has not been able to go out in any direction whatsoever. And he's still playing calm. I'm looking at his face right now on the camera. Like, 
he doesn't look like he's truly phased at all. And he is a warrior, a true warrior. And he will do everything he can because he's in a decent position in the group already, getting to beat out Hero, a really good Protoss. But right now, Showtime's bringing the heat. No, he absolutely is. And uh, you can see Dog just working with anything he can. If he can find an avenue to start getting some creep out on, then brilliant. But you're right, he is so blind. He doesn't see anything. And if Showtime is about to show up with six, lurker, uh, six carriers, and it's mostly lurkers, and how many hydras are even on the map, right? Like, can't be that many because he's made so many lurkers at this stage. This is going to be rough. Eight extra gates to the rebuild, instantly coming in from Showtime potentially too. And they had 27 cannons. You can answer to your question from earlier, Ben. <laughs> I mean, that is so many cannons. I mean, even if Dark wanted to do a counterattack, he's got a lot of infrastructure to go against. And Seth he's, Hydras, one he, queen. <laughs> yeah, he's soon got no units that shoot up left on the map. Five Hydras against this amount of carriers. This is the saddest Lurker army, but there's Lurkers for absolute days. I mean, a big Spore Crawler field is coming on over. I mean, Dark, the fact that he's playing this out, ah, he's a, he's a true fighter man. He's more of an optimist than I am. You can see how desperate he goes. He's like, I had to build 23 lurkers to survive. And obviously that's really bad against the carriers now, but like that's just how much he felt as though he needed those units because of how much pressure Showtime was able to apply up until this point. That Oracle, I think, gets donated to the Spore Crawlers, drops a revelation, doesn't do much else. And Oracles are important at this stage because they're your guaranteed vision. And Oracle, once it's revelated, you've got guaranteed vision of those lurkers throughout that revelation. It's not like an observer, which if it gets sniped down, you're in the midst of all these lurkers, suddenly you're in trouble. So it is nice to have those Oracles available, especially for moments like that. As it's still a lot of lurkers. It's still a lot of lurkers. Remember, like, Dark, he's been on a pretty low drone count the whole time, so his army is big. And this carrier count, it isn't at that, like, 8, 9 number where it's really scary with super duper sick upgrades. Soon it will be, but this, if there's a chance for Dark, this is kind of it, but I don't think this is it, Wardy. Look, even the ground army of Showtime just able to punch on forward. He's got so many gateways as well, and nice little fist bump from the wall over there. Nice play out of Showtime. Showtime's just very aware, like I say, all the way throughout this exactly knew what he needed to do. He was very aware. There wasn't a moment where I was like concerned that he was doing the wrong thing, even though he didn't end the game off that lead, right? Just very calm and collected. The transition was spot on. I think the only thing I would criticize is maybe he could have started air upgrades a little sooner because he wanted to go into it. Hidden plus two is typically such a big timing for air units and he didn't even have it at the end here. So he just could have started that a bit sooner. All began with this hold, of course, which was just monstrous. Losing like one worker, I mean, just what a setup. This hole was so sick. Like the amount of infrastructure he has in the back of his main base over here, it was like three, four shield batteries, a cannon over there. Look, you see all the beams from the shield batteries absolutely everywhere. I mean, this was a scary push, but he made it look pretty damn easy. And to make things look easy that are as difficult as that, that's a talent in itself. And Dark really did a great job of selecting the right unit composition to make sure that he would give himself a chance because not, nothing else really gets you to this point other than getting those lurkers out, and he just about got there. And yeah, he was kind of screwed when Showtime got to this point. But the whole idea from Dark was, hey, I'm gonna make you make every right decision, because if you step off the beat once for one moment, I will jump on you, I will punish you. It didn't arise because Showtime played out properly, but it's credited to Dark, because he was playing to his pretty much only out right until the bitter end. Yeah, I, I, it's one of those games where I'm like, Dark, you're dead, right? You're going to die on this push or this push or this push. And he was holding. He was doing good splits against, against all of it as well. Just played nice. But this man on camera right now, people really bring it when they turn up to Katowice, right? Like, the, 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 the little kinks in your armor, they really start to show. But so far, sh what Showtime has showcased, it's, it's nothing short of amazing. Like, these are some of the absolute best Zergs on the planet. And he's absolutely duking out with them. And so far, three and one, when it goes up against like Rainer and Dark, that's amazing. Very, very true. And even if he ended up losing this series, having the map win is such a big deal. You know, we talk about this all the time in Katowice because these groups are close, they're tense. It's been a map difference before. It was a map difference last year when Oliveira made it out of his group over Clamp, right? That was all it came down to, one map. You know, that's, that's how crazy these groups get. So even getting this first map is a big win. As obviously looking to fight back in the top left hand side of Oceanborn will be our Red Zerg player, Dark. And standing over in the bottom right as our Blue Protoss really living up to his name, it is Showtime. Ah, 
Ah, really cool what we're seeing out of Showtime. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed his play for a long time, you know? He's, he's the Protoss that, even if you're a player from a different race, it's hard to hate him, you know? He's never been one for these tricks, these gimmicks so much. He's always been about... He, or he's always felt to me like the European stats in a way. Yeah. Like it's always that kind of play that you get out of him, and that's why he holds a lot of respect. But it really feels like he's starting to level up again, which is kind of incredible to say. His, his PVZ lately has really been good. Like, throughout the last few months, it's been impressive. He had some crazy series against some of the top guys in Europe repeatedly. And he's shown it here today against Reno already. He's now a map up against Dark. Love that probe. Over to the corner, scouts the base. It's just so nice, just to guarantee it's going down there and at all, because Dark is someone that will proxy hatch you. So to get that confirmation immediately, really nice for Showtime. Yeah, absolutely. Dark is the kind of guy that can really throw the kitchen sink at you. Like, and we saw that in the previous game. Worked against Hero to absolute perfection. This game, though, Showtime just showcased how to deal with that. So far, though, everything pretty normal between these two here on Oceanborn. And I don't know who picked which map, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think Dark maybe picked map one. Uh, I mean, already, already. Dark is 1-0 in the group. I mean, both these players 1-0 in the group, actually, so both feeling pretty good, and they're both taking out very strong players in their opening matches as well. I mean, this group, honestly, it's been turned on its head a little bit. Like, Reynor going 0-2, that isn't something I really expected. I mean, he had Showtime and Maru, which is really hard, but Maru being 1-1, and then his loss was to Cyan? Yeah, right. Usually, if you're like one one, it's like, well, you know what? A couple of the like less likely to advance players to come. No, not for Maru. Maru's still got to go through Dark and Hero and Showtime. He's obviously playing well. That is not an easy lineup at all. So that is the uh, the, the kind of crazy part about it. Especially that's what the upsets cause, right? So this group is going to be mayhem. This is a group which I feel like when it comes to uh, Saturday, when you're playing the final day uh, game of the groups, I'm like. I feel like everyone's almost still going to be in the running and like every map on every series is likely going to be important. Yeah, like in my head, I was I was all about like, all right, I think Reyna's playing good recently and he's talked he's talk the big talk, you know, and I think Maru's always a solid contender, dark, very consistently good. And then I was like, hero, depending on which hero shows up, it could be a, you know, a, a flash in the pan or like an absolute star. But yeah, Showtime, he, he showed Case that there's there's another big boy in the group to talk about. No, absolutely. What a way to show up. I mean, remember when this group got released and Doc just tweeted out like question, question marks? marks <laughs> and then Showtime just replied to him, be like, question mark, and like more of them. I was like, yeah, that's kind of how I thought you guys would feel about it, but both living up to it so far. A few links about to have their link speed and they'll get some map control for Dark. I love the question mark tweets out of the Koreans, by the way. Like, <laughs> yeah. the last time I really remember seeing that and laughing so hard was, like, MMA went to MLG Arena or, like, Winter or something, lost to Goody 2-0 out of the <laughs> yeah. tournament. It's just, like, question marks. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I remember freaking, that so much. freaking Goody does that to the best of us, mate. But, uh, yeah, so far, similar build here by Showtime. We'll go for Oracles, and, hey, why not? I mean, they worked out to pretty good like degree in game one like they did a little bit of drone damage but some of those stasises really bought showtime a lot of time like not just in that natural where it got it on the ramp but even when he's taken the fourth base and it's like yeah now, now i'm pretty safe right for a long time this is a lot of links to turn up at this moment but oh again a little bit stuck here already a decent hold by showtime even has the target fighter guarantee as many links as possible other oracles across the map nothing on the natural location will be turned away. There's one drone coming down here. Do we want to grab it? It's going to be a sport roll anyway. Mm. Like this game though, Dark, like his uh, work account, definitely looking healthier than it did in the previous one. Uh, when I was looking at it, I know Protoss tends to get a little bit of a lead, especially when this attack comes out, just because you have to make units to deal with it, right? But that previous game, he was he was wounded right from the get-go. Showtime's been more aggressive with the Adept sooner this game though, mm. right? So he, he took a little while to come across the map with the Adepts last time. This time he's going to be here much sooner. We'll see what he wants to do. Two queens. I don't know if I love that. And near the sport crawl, so the oracles can't really help the adepts. Obviously, they're going to help themselves by just being choked up. It's a few drones. Five. I mean, it's five minutes in the game, so it's still early enough that I think I love that for Showtime. Uh, and keeping all the oracles alive. Yeah. I mean, Dark's doing the right thing here because he knows there's not another wave, a ground wave to deal with. Yeah. So it was like 11 drones, catch back up, getting the lair on the go, getting the plus one melee on the go. I mean, they're both playing very well. They're both absolute top tier players at their respective races. Yeah, bringing it uh, all here in the very important Gadavito event. Couple more drones, Oracles will go sit in the corner. 
As yeah, that melee upgrade are really uh, going to show us what Dark plans for the next little while in this game. Showtime just continues into his Bliss One, into his Blink. So again, really sticking with those Stalker styles, following these Oracles. And then says, no, I'm actually going to go charge, baby. Let's do it. Really good, though, of course, against the melee upgrades. Charge is generally much better there. Ah, absolutely. I'm going to see a little bit of first-hand action here from Showtime. Getting the macro going, seeing what he can do with these Oracles. And Protoss is so good at this, man. This gliding and shooting and yeah. this drone count killing from So him. difficult to do. Yeah, it's actually a lot harder than it looks, like the, the gliding effect. Um, but I, I, the drone count killing that he's getting away with here, this sh doesn't often happen. Like when you see the Serals defend and the Reynos in this matchup, like this is already a good amount of damage and Showtime's just feeling it today. Yeah, he is, checks in, finds the Queen there, just wants to drop the Revelation down, try and find some information. Just very interested as to where he's going to go with this charge. Like, how aggressive is he going to be? We see a lot of gateways being added on. That's quite natural now because you're hitting three base saturation. How much of a push does he want to make? Obviously, he's not warping in any extra stalkers. Putting a lot of money into gates. He could start warping in a lot of zealots all of a sudden and then really hit dark before he's prepped with any sort of banes or anything. Like, Ling Hydra is not going to do well against a lot of charge lots. So, yeah, it's a lot of Hydras, though. It's a lot of Hydras. And the drone count isn't insane at this point. Like, dark is definitely one of these guys that pumps out the units before the other Zergs, yeah. and then drones up afterwards, if he wants to, unless he's really smelling blood. And Showtime's doing a good job just trying to find out what exactly is going on. Got to see when the fourth base was going up, and he can kind of expect this opening, I suppose, to some degree, right? Or rather this follow-up from Dark, but uh -huh. still, it's Dark. Okay, might have got a little glimpse here on the high just popping out and when they did. Yeah, I think the main thing for Showtime, right, is just he doesn't have to do loads with this. He's taking that fourth base and everything. He just wanted to skip through the Stalker stage, right? He says, there's no reason for me to get the Blink Stalkers up, so let's go to charge a Mordlar on. Skip out on the Stalkers, which are very gas-expensive units, and that need to be super active on the map. Right now, if you imagine Stalkers trying to be here, fighting these Links with Plus or melee, a lot of creep, feels very unlikely they'd get much done, so... I don't hate what he's doing, that stays forward. Just gonna catch a couple of links. Good pullback from Dark to only get one activated here. Prism gonna have to do some evacuating, I think, as you see the Oracle's in some trouble in Showtime. Maybe get a little too adventurous, has the high ground to escape with. Gets one final Overseer, but that was a lot of losses from Showtime on that fight. I don't think he expected quite that number of yeah. Zerg right there. Like, you felt that maybe if the first stasis is amazing, but Dark was very good, as you said. Kind of baited it a little bit with just a few links, and he survives. He weathers the storm for now, and. Drone count still not up to like a really healthy number like 80. He's actually thrown down a Roach Warren now, which is very interesting to go into Roaches after seeing what he's seeing. But I ah, will see what Dark's able to do with this because his army's starting to get a little bit scarier now, here, Wardy. Showtime really needs to buy 45 seconds of Storm, right? Mm. You get Storm, it's so good against the Link Hydra. But you need to get there. And right now, these High Templars on the run, they are going to be saved, I think. One goes down, but only one. Well, just got to be careful because every Storm will help. Absolutely, this is quite a squishy army. I mean, it's not got Banelings in the mix or anything like that. It's just raw, non-suicidal units. And the Roaches are definitely going to add some health to it and longevity. But still, that work count, not too high. Like, Dark, I don't think he's looking to make this a super long game. And if he is to make it a long game, he's looking to mortally wound his opponent getting there. Yeah, Showtime really needs to lean up on his uh, static defense. Remember, he also lost some of the Oracles. He has less Stasis Wards to help cover all these entrances. Has to drop two Storms already. Remember, he doesn't have a lot of High Temple with energy. Some of them were more recently warped in, so that might take a little while. And these kind of fights are weird because he's not really near any static defense either, right? So kind of a weird position in Darth make on sort of control the natural. I love that the High Temple find the Storm towards the Hydras at least because that's where you really want it to be. But Showtime's going to need a little bit more down half the army supply. Let's see what he can get. That Storm's really not doing it for me, Ben. As it looks as though this army of talk is going to be terrifying to deal with. It really is. I, I love the fact that he kind of gr brought some roaches to the front, used them like marauders. That's a lot of depowering done on that pylon as well over there. The robo can't even make immortals anymore, and I think that's his only robo. Showtime feeling now is the time to really try and shut this down. And honestly, he's got some big power units here, but that is so much Zerg in his natural right now. Just, just no stack defense on this natural location. He had a stasis ward like up in the center of the map. I feel like he needed the stasis ward here. He needed to stop this ramp being broken, and he just did not manage to do that at all. So now Dark is going to swarm him through. The reinforcing roach isn't just hitting this timing off the 70 work because it's going to work beautifully. And Showtime just wasn't able to get well enough set up for it. We are going to a game three here between Showtime and Dark. This was such a dark game, by the way. Yeah. Like, oh, if you told me, like, or it was a barcode name, I'm like, which Zerg is this? I'm dark. Any any day of the week, just low drone count, kind of this 
Some weird kind of tech switch there into the Rojas, but it was the perfect tech switch. Very good handling of the Storms as well. Like, really good splits. I love the little Rojas going forward as well. And he caught Showtime totally out of his position for that. Yeah, when Showtime first pushed, you're right. He definitely, this moment here, he did not expect this much to be here. And, and he's up against the wall, and I almost feel like he probably could have started evacuating maybe a little sooner, but it's like, when do you cut your losses? And here, you lose power to the Robo. There's no stack defense to help you here at all. I feel like he's got so much stack defense on the fourth. He's got a bunch on the third. He just had nothing to stop Dark End in this position. That's the one place he didn't expect Dark to take the fight, to dive into the heart of his, well, entire setup. And that's exactly where Dark found it. He got, he got the weakness. Absolutely. I mean, it was like a giga roll in from Dark, right? Like, no tier two upgrades on the way. It was all about pumping out as many units as possible. But that's exactly what he was looking for. And it's exactly what he achieved. And that's what makes Dark scary. Like, we, you can't help but mention it. Like, this guy just knows how to kill people with absolutely anything. Like, oh, he, he's a menace, an absolute menace. And now we're getting on to map three here between these two lads. Yeah, I think Dog's going to take a quick moment or two for a break, so it'll be a moment before we do jump in, but we have ourselves a very exciting Game 3 coming up because you've seen the potential of both. If Showtime can get up into his game control, he makes a lot of good decisions. But Dark can stop him getting there. He can make it crazy. And he tried to in the first game. That time, Showtime found the defense. I think that's going to be what Game 3 comes down to as well. There's no way Dog doesn't at some point say, survive this, and then we can play on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's just... The, the amount of, like, things in his arsenal that you have to worry about if you're sat in Showtime shoes, and it's just like, mate, that, that, I don't normally die to that kind of stuff, but I don't normally get to play against that kind of stuff either. It's just a bit a bit unusual, but that's just, that absolutely is Dark's bread and butter, and I I always love watching Dark play, man. He's, he's an absolute, an absolute baboon when it really comes down to it, but beautiful. And we will get to a short break just while we give Dark the time that he needs. The players are very used to facing off against each other in 1v1 in StarCraft, but let's test their general knowledge against one another. But don't land on the X, because that's minus one point. ご飯取りよぼどろはぎすみだ。エクスナーラーライスいろんなあんだ。あ、日本語はめんで。3本いにか。3本しげよ。うん。こんすんなんで。こんすんなんで。ひんひんちょうどる。わ、ちりなんす
감사합니다. To see so many minus ones across the board on the on, on the trivia quizzes, it's genuinely impressive how low those scores have been throughout today. I love I love the fact that like you ask a Protoss like, "Hey man, do Protoss have mouths?" And he's like, "Oh, this is deep." deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Dog just laughs at him. This isn't deep, bro. Do they have a mouth or not? He's like, yeah, they have mouths. He's like, no, no, they don't. Like, Dark teaching and Protoss, Protoss things. That's just fantastic. I'm so glad the Koreans got asked this, though, because be, this has been like a hotly debated topic, like, not debated necessarily, but it's been talked about a meme so much recently, right? Between like our streams and stuff. <laughs> so, good to know Heroes just out of touch completely as we get ready for game number three here. Dark and Showtime looking to have the perfect start to day one of their Katowice runs. In the top left, the dangerous Zerg. Not so good at trivia, but in StarCraft, he's deadly. It's Dark. And spawning over in the bottom right hand side as our blue Protoss for Team Big, it is showtime. <laughs> actually, of the two there, I mean, Dark, Dark actually answered all of them right. Yeah, Dark was <laughs> way better than Hero. He was like, yeah, I think at least one was a herbivore. And it's like, the ul even said the Ultralist before the answer popped up. And yeah. I was like, hey, that's pretty impressive. I didn't know that. And then, <laughs> and then he's getting. Herbivores you know, are right? big. And he's like, oh, you got that easy one. That was a freaking easy one. But. Oh, uh, do they have mouths? That's deep, man. It's philosophical. <laughs> it's a philosophical question. Yeah. <laughs> he thought way too deep into that. And it's like, okay, explain it, man. He's like, no, no, no. My brain's too small for this. Oh, that was fantastic. Great content. All right, all right. Third game between these two lads, though. Final game of the evening. The day is getting late over here. And these players, I think they've been here for a long time now. Both 1-0 in the group thus far. Taking maps, though, in every series. That's awesome. And Dark. He's up to some cheeky stuff over here, Wardy. Yep, no, he absolutely is. Drone comes across, wants to block this hatch, but Showtime gets the probe down there. So it's just going to say, nah, -uh. and then we get the Nexus in. I mean, in the end, Dark already had one hatch star to start up his gas and pool. So yeah, I mean, I mean, this is nice for Showtime because the drone across the map early is money spent. I think that's already a terrible start oh. for Dark. Like, I, I mean, like the fact that he did not get the hatch down, but also the probe came and hit the drone first. Yeah. Meant that the drone couldn't win the fight. If the drone hits equal time with the probe, the drone wins in that moment. And then it, like it's a little dance and stuff. But so far, this is not the start that Dark was hoping for. Yeah, first two minutes, disastrous, but not quite on those levels. No, no, no. But yeah, now this drone, it's just like, well, do I go back home with my tail between my legs? And he's like, no, no, I'll stick around. We get to see which tech you're going for at least, which, you know, he's, he's respecting this drone. He's He's got the probe following it for a little bit. I don't think it's entirely necessary, but yeah, Showtime's definitely not going to be too phased about this thus far. No, not at all. Got a second gas up, drops the Stargate in the main. The drone will spot that. I don't think that's... Uh... You don't want to delay the Stargate so much that you just you kill off the drone. Just let him see it, right? Just, it's fine. The only thing you could do is like some crazy like cancel into Twilight, right into Glaives, but the Adept's moving out on the map. It didn't even come to kill this drone. No, I mean like that guy just hanging around for as long as it did. It's going back home at this point. It's like, do I even make it? It's like, bruh, probably not. I'm, I mean, I'm a little bit surprised, but uh, yeah, Showtime just prioritizing the fact that you can get Adepts on out on the map. Remember, speed's going to be a lot later with a build like this, where you really do commit to trying to get a hatchery down. And Dark just trying to be annoying with it, but yeah. Um, and about scouting the Stargate, long gone are the days of, oh my goodness, I got scouted, I now lose kind of thing. It's like, no, no, no. Builds do tend to be kind of in line with things now, and it's just about dealing with it properly. Especially a Stargate, right? It's it's so good. Like, okay, Dark can be like, okay, nice. It's not a Twilight Council, but it could still be a Twilight after Stargate, you know? There's still opportunities there as these Adepts are going to commit in. They're going to get a drone and now going to find another. Run away from those Lings. Actually created an exit for themselves for the moment. They are desperate for one more drone. He's going to get it. And that's, see, that's pretty good. That's a lot of lost mining time. Multiple drones going down and super early in the game. Yeah, and like that isn't something that Showtime's been doing. He's been waiting for like a good five or so Adepts to then go in, combo it with the Oracles. But given the opening, just feeling like, hey, I can get out across the map and killing those drones as early as he did, that's absolutely great for him. We'll keep this probe alive as well over here. That's also nice. So far, this is a fantastic start for Showtime. And the drone count, the worker count, really, really represents that very well right now. 
Very aggressive with the oracles on those lanes, activating them immediately. I thought the first time necessary to make sure the probe doesn't go down. But even right, on the map here, activating to get rid of a single ling. Just wants to push these units back, stop them from being on the map, stop Dark from having units is never a bad strategy. No, definitely not. And Showtime just getting everything sorted out behind this. This is the kind of game where I can absolutely see Dark just wing it with something, you know, when it's all been a bit like, nothing's disastrous, but nothing's that good. Um, and, you, oh, I like this second wave of Adepts coming out, because that's not necessarily something that you're really thinking about if you're Dark right now. And he, does he have any links on the field even? No, I, I feel like he doesn't have much at all. No, a he's ten, a 10. Well, that's okay. Obviously, this depends where the fight is. The Oracles are very separated from the Adepts, and that part I don't like for Showtime, because so much of this is like, hey, the Oracles can jump in and help if they want to. He's mm. going to send him, man. He wants some drones. He splits. He gets a couple different drones. That was actually really well done. And he actually keeps two of the Adepts alive. So, again, don't really hate that. Gets a Creep Teamer on the exit as well. And even these ones going to threaten into the main base. So, again, cool play from Showtime being very aggressive this game. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah, you were absolutely right. Like, that... <laughs> sending the two different sets of shades onto two different drones, just guaranteeing the kills, no overfire or anything. These oracles, though, this is a little bit scary there. And you saw the little twinge on Showtime's face, realizing that, ah, he could bit off a little bit more than he should chew, or can chew even. Does he only have one oracle left? Did he uh, only build two this Two, one? two oracles okay, left. So he did build three. Yeah, no, I mean, losing one just, it's always sad because, like, it's almost always unnecessary, right? Like, it's, uh, like, ah, uh, did I get that much out of this? These last two Adepts are still going to come back one more time. Two more drones, a couple more shots, make it three. I, I really love what he's done with the Adepts this game. It's just such a different vibe. And if I'm dark right now, I'm quaking a little bit. It's like, bro, like, who am I playing against? This is meant to be showtime. Yeah, absolutely. This is a different tempo altogether. And I feel this was Showtime reacting a lot to what Dark did early on and just realizing like, hey, you're a bit more wounded than you would be normally. And these Oracles again, just realizing, hey, there's no spores here. Nice dance away with that Oracle. What? Does die though. That was the longest reign queen of all time. And whoo, yeah, I, I breathed a sigh of relief there. You saw Showtime on the camera. He was like, whoo. Uh, gets a drone here as well for his troubles and a spire being made here. Oh, that, that, that can't be good for Dark though, right? If Showtime's oh. going plus one and blink, he potentially has aggression on the way. The only good thing here for Dark is that the oracles have been dying off, so he doesn't have a lot of oracle aid for the stalkers. Then they might not be as aggressive, and then Dark might get away with this. I mean, killing the oracles also reduces the amount of revelation available to so get a scout on. Yeah, so I mean, Dark playing with the information or the lack of information that Showtime's going to have from this point on, which is cool by him. He has to be careful about getting spotted. He's going to try and take his fourth and fifth simultaneously. And he's getting a decent scout. He knows what he's up against here. Yeah, he really is. These few stalks continue across. We just see the Templar archives getting that storm on the way immediately as well. And that's all well and good, but you just need to make sure you have what you need against those meters. In theory, storm, Archon, stalkers, these are all the right things. Just need to kind of make sure we have enough of it in the right places. All this stack defense is going to help as well. Dark is helped to build a lot of muters at once too. It's 1,000 gas banked up at the moment. And remember, Showtime has no idea about this so far. He's been very good about building static, ready for stuff happening, but muters, they really can cause so much havoc. And it's like he sees that it's, you know, a, a five and six gas on this third base. So he has to know that there's a lot of gas being used for something. Can we have a look at his main base, natural, see where the cannons really are going up here? So very, very open main base. That That's not a base you can really dive with that many muters, but there is In a, a natural. Yeah, there's a good few options here. Yeah, Showtime ideally kind of like gets going with Storm, right? But that is going to be scary. And obviously once the muters start attacking, then finding the chance to get across the map is very difficult from there on out. And these meters, they're gathering in that bottom left-hand corner. They're going to have a direct flight into the main. He still is adding one more cannons, though, and he is now building a Phoenix, so it looks like the gig is up. He's starting to realize exactly what this is, and Phoenix are a big step in the right direction. They absolutely are, and, like, it, it almost feels a little bit too late. There's, okay, there's a cannon there that will buy a little bit of a time. Stalkers aren't too far out on the map either, so they can get home pretty decently. Nice little pull away with the probes, but still, these muters deal so much damage so quickly to workers. And look at that. In the blink of an eye, I mean, Showtime, he's not even greeted this yet with his stalkers. This is actually a terrible situation for Showtime to find himself in. Uh, yeah, everything about it was great, apart from just the lack of confirmation and then having nothing in that main base immediately. Drops a storm here to ward this off, kills another probe of his own in the process. That's just the cost of doing business. 
as these mutas will continue to try and find openings. Second Stargate, right choice, because Dark builds more mutas. He's doubling down on the muta list. The more so that that happens, the better that double Stargate's going to pay for itself, because you need a good Phoenix count now against this one. Absolutely, you do. I mean, Dark's so used to playing against Hero, where it's like he almost switches out of Phoenix, even when he's on <laughs> two Stargate ready yeah. for it. But you need the Phoenix. You need to get some control back, because Showtime's ground army is pretty solid. And it's not as if Dark's packing anything with true meat behind this. It's all about the Muda. It's all about a lot of Lings as well. That plus two to nail. For a few moments, this Overseer was very low earlier. Stalkers couldn't finish it off. Now the Phoenix will. Dark will see the Phoenix, and oftentimes the response to this is a few Corruptors to tank those Phoenix while letting the Mutas do the damage. So we'll see how that pans out. Oh. Great storms. So many Lings go down. Now we dive through with these Mutas, but they take a lot of splash from Archons. The Phoenix were there to help, and can't say that that was the best moment of so for Dark. He has one Phoenix on the turnaround. There are those Corruptors coming up, but that was a good moment from Showtime. That was sick from Showtime. I mean, the fact that he <laughs> was ready for that, getting the Storms on location there was big. And now we look at the supplies. Dark still below 80 drones. And these Mutas, they're all a bit softened up for the time being. Granted, in a good minute or so, they will be full health again. But that is the time that Showtime needed because you can't let these Mutas dive your base and just deal damage here, there, and everywhere. But already a very cool game. I'm a, I was gonna say I'm a little bit surprised that Dark is continuing with the just attack upgrades on the air units, given that, you know, the carapace is so good for your Corruptors against the Phoenix, but that is such a healthy flock that he's got just going around the map. And look, he's taking, is that a, a, a sixth and seventh base simultaneously? Yeah, I, I think this entire setup, attack upgrade included, is like, hey, I'm ready to base trade. Yeah. Because eventually, your only choice is to base trade, and I'm going to take every precaution to base trade ahead of time. So I think that's what he's expecting Showtime to create at some point and then he's going to be ready to just take, like I say, as good a position from that as possible. And I mean, he plays against Hero so much these days in all these weeklies and stuff that it's like, you poke the bear one too many times, you can bet your ass that Hero's going to throw it all across the map. But Showtime, he's not necessarily that kind of guy. He will play this out, and eventually it's going to get to a point where his army's going to be really damn good. But Dark, he's not giving him too much breathing room. I mean, Dark's doing everything right with the weapons that he has here, but oh, getting a getting a high tempo in the main there as well, that was big. Yeah, I guess it just didn't quite have energy to drop the storm off because those mirrors took a couple storms on the way in. Oh no, the high tempo need to be careful. Showtime has to be paying attention in those positions. As Dog just keeps, can we get a unit count check on the Mutalus count? Because it must be uh, getting up to 30 now with 11 Corruptors and then only Lings with this. There's not even a Baneling Nest down, I don't think, unless I missed that on the way. This is very much so Ling Muta Corruptor. And Showtime is now maxed out. I mean, it's, it's a proper flimsy army, isn't it? Like, it, it, while the Corruptors, obviously they, they pack some meat behind them, but everything else like if showtime is on the map like you have to defend with those muters which is not what dark wants to be doing and that's what showtime's trying to exploit here because yeah might might be sacrificed to the zer gods over here but he's not gonna go down without a fight and now phoenix range though yeah phoenix range is done he can start actually fighting against this pretty nicely he does have plus one uh, air weapons as well which will help quite a lot against the unarmed or low armor upgrades of these air units from uh, the zerg player what a wild situation. More Corruptors on the way from Dark, some more Lings as well. He has got that Balin S. Balin speed on the way up, Roach speed too. He's looking at future options. He's looking at ways to get out of this. Of course, Showtime, well, he's gonna start building a fifth base on the bottom side and just gonna chain, you know, really try and get up to that next step of the macro, that counterattack bottom left is gonna hit hard as well. So that's gonna be running in right now. This base in trouble. And again, you're gonna probably have to defend this for the moment with Mutalisks. A few Banes now finishing, but they're not quite nearby. So yeah, this is frustrating. One thing that I love that the Dark's doing, he's really, really bolted down and is at ground upgrade specifically. Plus three melee on the way, plus two carapace, going for Ultralis as well. Right now, Showtime's struggling a little bit at dealing with what is currently on the field, but Ultras, when they come out, that is going to be real tricky. Remember, I think he gave up those Immortals as well earlier on, so... But two more Robos on the way. So actually, Showtime is always getting a preparation for this, because I think he knows it's a common follow-up. Or like one of the follow-ups, so he's getting prep ready. At the very least, he can go back into those. His fifth phase might be in a little bit too much trouble here. Stalkers blink forward. Playing high tempo. The Phoenix, how are you going to take this big fight? The Mutas commit. 
in spreading now. They're just going to send it. I mean, so many storms coming down. The Phoenix are being dealt with by the Corruptors. Massive fight Zelt across the map at the same time as you saw in the picture from picture. I mean, Showtime is going to come through, and these Corruptors are all very low. Is it enough? Because we still got a good Mutalist count as well. What a ridiculous fight as Dark finally backs away, but man, he's still maxed out. I mean, these Corruptors are really doing a good job of tanking all those shots, and you saw that, like, even though the Muta's spread and stuff, the Corruptors are still the ones taking the main brunt from those Phoenix. He handled it very nicely. Eight Ultras on the way. Dark's got the tempo here, and it's gonna be so hard to hold on. I mean, Showtime's probably feeling like, ah, I can get a lot of these air units, right? But dealing with that ground army, it's gonna be so damn difficult for him. And Phoenix do nothing against the Ultras, obviously, so th that's gonna be even worse. Like, you're just gonna be stuck in a real tough position. You might get rid of a lot of this Air Force, but the preparation against the ground army isn't there because he's rebuilding Phoenix. He doesn't know about the next step. You're right, it's all about the momentum and Showtime just unknowing, and he's pushing across the map, which is the worst thing you can do, pushing into the Ultras, giving them the best possible shot of this. I feel like he needs to go back, hold that fifth base, and just hunk it down and say, you know, as much as this sucks, I just got to play this well. And I mean, the thing is, when you're against a normal Zerg in the situation, you're expecting them to be on a high drone count. Look at Dark. He's pretty wealthy behind this, but that is only 73 drones. His army is massive. This is three more Ultras with the greatest fire on the way. How many Ultras are on the map, though? I think Showtime is in for a big surprise with the amount of Ultras that he's really going to see here. Sees them now. He's going to start kiting back. The Muta's on the right-hand side, by the way, so that's where they are at. A couple of Storms coming down, trying to hit these Ling Showtime. You can see he's mostly trying to retreat, getting these Archons out of there. The Muta's are just being sacrificed to try and get damage wherever. The fifth base went down from Showtime during this as well, so he's going to be without that fifth to follow up from here. Three Immortals on the way, but they're just not ready yet. And these, uh, these Ultralists are very much so ready to fight. Uh, does he even have shield battery overcharge available here. I'm not sure. Maybe use it to deal with the Mutalists earlier, but I mean, these Ultras, right now, these trades over here aren't the prettiest trades from them, but I don't feel he's really looking for the cleanest trades. He just wants to keep on herding Showtime, which is absolutely what he's doing here. 16 probes do fall, and he's not going to stop here, is he, Wardy? I mean, these upgrades are sick on these Zerg units as well. Making so many lings. The Phoenix are just complete dead weight. I mean, they can go and maybe harass drones, but if you get the chance, right now he's got to put so much attention into defending. The lings are going to be in the natural as well, and this is where Dark is just going to cause utter chaos, and this is going to be where Showtime really is going to struggle. There's one of them all that's trying to put in some work, but the lings are going to get to it. And yeah, he lost the right side base as well, so that's going to go down, down to three bases right here. And you can see Showtime's reaction as he is realizing that this has just gotten out of control. And Dark played this momentum-based game, brings it back from the 1-0 deficit to the 2-1 victory. Dark will be 2-0 at the end of day one. That was such a dark series, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see that he's able to make StarCraft look so different, especially from like a Zerg perspective, because I mean, Zerg's have showcased that you don't have to play like this. You know, you can do the proper, I want to say the proper, the the, the Serral S play where you kind of make it go to that game, you survive, you're a punching bag for a while, but then you get to really blossom and shine. Dark just blossoms so early in a game and really makes the game go out of control. And he's so difficult to go up against. And you really felt that in a lot of these games, these tech switches, these weird ass attacks, even in the first game, this is not easy to hold. Bring the drones as well for the spines. Ah, oh, what a series. Great, so you start off with this, it really set the tone, it continued like that as well. Shutsan played this first game out very methodically, but he had control, and that's something he never had for the rest of the series after game number one. And it really showed, you know, he got up to the comfortable army composition, he made it happen on this one, but in game two, in game three, Dark just couldn't, you know, Showtime just couldn't kind of get those holds initially to give himself a good spot. Again, it felt like he was decently set up against the Mutas. He just needed to know where they were coming from sooner, a little bit more prep in the main, a split on the Stalkers, and, you know, obviously that would have been better, obviously, here in this game, too. Already caught off guard by the amount of units here, and that really kind of set the uh, dominoes into effect for this second game. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, you know how Dark plays. Everybody knows how Dark plays, but when you're in that situation, you always feel like you have to do something. Yeah. Because so often, 99.9% .9 of your PvZ games, you do. So that's what makes Dark so damn tricky to really prep for. Yeah, and then this game three, it was, uh, this was the moment where I was like, okay, I think Showtime's got some hope, but Dark just went chaos mode, man. He just got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm gonna take this fight. And you're like, you're gonna take this fight? I don't think Showtime expected him to yeah. take that fight at all. I, I think he was like, all right, all right, are you really, oh, you're actually taking it. And it was so damn good. Anyway, we're gonna get to hear an interview from the man himself. Thank you so much, Dark.